Welcome back to The Founder. I am Tasha Sejal and today we are going to talk about a couple of uh, entrepreneurs, uh, some up and coming entrepreneurs in Sri Lanka that are already making a name for themselves and I don't think I need any introduction for this next one. We got the founder of Sozo. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Sushanta, tell me about how it all began. How did uh, Sozo come about and uh, when it all started? Yeah. Um, okay, so this started uh, three years ago. Okay. It was an experiment because um, one of my other businesses is tea and we used to make iced teas in the office. Okay. And uh, we thought, you know, it might be interesting to put this in a bottle and let's see whether people will pay for the convenience. Uh, but we didn't expect it to um, be anything that it is today. So we started in our kitchen, a couple of us were just brewing the tea, bottling it ourselves and um, giving it out to people to try. The feedback was great. Um, Sri Lanka is not traditional in iced tea market. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you talk about tea, it's still struggling to keep up with coffee. Uh, so we didn't really have big hopes, but we were just really passionate about how good it tasted and the possibility. We wanted to know, you know, we wanted to try out. So we gave it a try. Yeah. And uh, but we wanted to do things differently. From the start, we realized that there was too many products that mm -hmm. uh, were appealing or looked good, but were packed with preservatives. Uh, and different things so our product is the only one of its kind which mm -hmm. can stay outside uh, a chiller or without any cold storage for one year with no preservatives so that's really interesting for all of our customers so what would you say was the hardest part uh, beginning uh, at the at the beginning uh, how it you know brought about things uh, i think operational know-how and technical okay. know-how because we had a dream we wanted to create something that was fresh uh, like I said, no preservatives, but last for a long time because our customers demanded a, la uh, a longer shelf time. So that was an obstacle. So we, I'm not a food scientist, you know, and we don't really know anyone who, who knows that kind of thing. So I would uh, actually go to supermarkets and, you know, look at some other products and just stare at the label, you know, just <laughs> hoping that some sense of uh, information would come out. And uh, But, you know, it just it's beautiful. Things fall in place. Mm -hmm. And you pursue something, you know, things open up. Uh, you know, you suddenly stumble upon someone who happens to be, uh, you know, having some access to that industry or you come across an article and, you know, for us it was a journey of things falling in place. Yeah. It was a graceful journey. So I think, yeah, hardest part was that. But um, I think in six months since mm -hmm. we started, we were first bottling it and we had a shelf life of three weeks. And uh, that was not really enough. We were going, uh, you know, out of out of stock and also out of expiry um, and we said okay let's let's make this jump and in six months time we come started commercially bottling yeah. and we landed our first big customer at the time uh, mm -hmm. coffee bean and tea leaf okay. our biggest customer yeah. at the time yeah. so um yeah <laughs> but that would be a that would have been our first obstacle yeah that's it's pretty cool and it's amazing how far you've come as well so another thing is um just off camera i was asking uh, dushanta about how the brand Sozo has been around so many places and just the other day I just dropped into uh, a pizza shop and, uh, and, and I asked you uh, about it and you said that you didn't know. Sure. So it's, it's pretty much everywhere now and what do you think about that? Yeah, that's really exciting, <laughs> uh, something completely unexpected. Um, we've adopted a very lean business model, uh, so distribution happens to different parties. So we, we concentrate on what we're good at, which is the manufacturing and also our marketing and sort of branding, whereas distribution is done through several other parties. Um, so that means that you know we tap into networks of other people who have been in the market longer than us, uh, been uh, more established. So you know it just starts spreading like wildfire. And I think uh, tourists have been a, a big market for us. So in the East Coast, if you go now uh, next, uh, next, uh, next month, you'll see our branding everywhere. And that's just a natural adapt adaptation. We didn't really have to tell anyone, you know, we'll, we'll pay you X amount of like a fee to mm -hmm. have our brand in nothing. These are local um, shopkeepers, restaurant owners who said, we love your brand, our customers love your product. Um, just do more, be more visible here. So I, I think, again, it's a matter of things falling in place. Yeah, for sure. And uh, coming into three years, you said, uh, exactly, actually, yeah. uh, in this industry, uh, what would you say is, uh, you know, something that you are looking forward to in the year 2019? It has been a very challenging year for sure for many, but uh, we still have a couple of months left. So what are we to expect? Uh, I'm optimistic. Okay. Um, I think <laughs> that 
even the current situation would, would phase over and I, you know, I really like it, people are you know, quite confident themselves mm. and I think since we've been through a situation of mm. civil war and stuff in the past, I think we are hardened yeah. and our people yeah. are ready to come to bounce back. So no, I don't think that's going to have an effect but in terms of us, um, we are really excited because we're launching a new uh, experience in beverages. Uh, that's coming on the 15th of May and okay. I wish we were talking to post that but that could be safe for another time. Um, it's going to be something completely unexpected. Okay. It's bringing something in food into a beverage. Uh, it's a blow of categories. It's, uh, it's going to blow people's minds off. So that's really exciting for okay. us. Okay. Um, and also international growth. So now we, uh, we export to several countries in Europe mm -hmm. um, and we're starting up um, in the region, uh, in Australia. Okay. So we're, we're quite optimistic. This year is going to be good for us. Okay. Dushanta, now you've been into this uh, business for some time now and uh, what would you say, you know, becoming an entrepreneur, being what you are today, what would be your definition of success? Yeah, um, <laughs> that's something I think uh, a lot about. I think uh, the success will look like something for sure. Mm -hmm. It looked like um, really big offices, it looked like really big uh, platforms, uh, networks across the world, all of that. Uh, and personally maybe fancy cars or whatever. It looked like something for sure. Um, and each of us have a different way of going about it. But I think real success is when money works for you and you don't work for money. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I think, it goes along the way of, you know, working smart instead of working hard. Working hard is good. You learn a lot of things along the way. And of course, to work smart, you have to have first worked hard. But what I see a lot is that people still continue to do the same thing the same way every single day and that kind of you spend your life thinking oh I'm a really hard worker but you you, you know if you just switched on your on your thinking and your knack like your ability to sort of see through the gaps and work smart you realize there's far more productive ways of doing what you do and more effective so yeah I think for me yeah it's got to be uh, the other way around. So you being in the food and uh, beverage industry, uh, there's a lot of challenges that come with it and of course there's a lot of people who are trying to open up their own businesses yeah. and many I have spoken to have failed and they give up very easily. Is there a piece of information or a piece of advice that you would uh, like to spread out to those young entrepreneurs in you know saying that they want to have their own brand you know make their own iced tea or sure. iced coffee or anything sure. in that matter. Right. What would you say is, say is the key thing that they need to keep pushing forward? Yeah, that's several things actually, very interesting <laughs> because um, a lot of entrepreneurs mm. and, and like you said, I meet other people as well, um, they're, they're stuck on three things. One is finance, uh, second thing is network, Yes. and third thing is the question of success itself. Yes. And if you look at all these three things, they become the obstacles themselves. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you realize that you have to start at some point. Yes. Then you kind of work around those obstacles. So I mean, I I find out people who are like, how much money did you put into your startup? Like they ask me, and I'm like, uh, you know, less than you can ever imagine. So then they're like, but how do you accelerate? So I think every human is a rocket, a rocket ship ready to launch, uh, to get to get extremely successful, all of that. But a lot of people have lots of ideas. Um, it's got to be this way. I've got to have to have to have a fancy office at this place. Uh, I've got to have a car. You know, you start putting all these sort of um, ideas in place, and you sort of create obstacles for yourself. Mm -hmm. So we started at the Good Market. You know, we were a tuck shop vendor. If you think about it, uh, we just operated on the weekends. Um, and how could that transform into exports and having? I mean, now for example, Shangri La stocks us as the only local beverage in all their minibars in their rooms. Mm -hmm. That's a, I mean, for us, that's really exciting because it's an international brand, it's yes. an endorsement on a high level. So I think you have to start somewhere. And trust me, like, through experience, when you start, it's almost like the entire universe just sort of conspires to uh, give you success because it, it shows a very progressive nature. You're not looking at what you don't have. And we come from a background where we don't really have access to huge finance uh, uh, institutions or funds or whatever. But we never made that an obstacle. Mm -hmm. So if we, if right now if what, if what was available to us was a good market or a similar platform, then we would do that to the best of our ability. But without thinking, ah, is this enough or is this how I want to be seen amongst my friends or all these kinds of things. And okay. you realize as you start doing that, you almost open up a realm and that just starts 
pushing you further and further to success. So if it's finance, okay, scale down, start small. If it's uh, network, go meet people, get more social, yes. you know, come out of your comfort zone. So I think obstacles honestly are meant to be smashed. I don't look at an obstacle as, oh my gosh, it's a wall and whatever. I, I spend every day thinking how am I going to smash this obstacle and that's really important. It so is. I think if, if young people or I'm young, young myself, but I'm saying entrepreneurs, startup, people in startups can, can learn to work with what they have in their hand. There's a reason why they are in a particular place at a particular time. There's a reason for that. Yes. So if we learn to work within that, we can, I mean, you start to see the train rolling. So yeah, I, I would say start, just do it. This next question is for our venue sponsor, Columbo Cooperative, that uh, provide modern workspaces and services for any companies of all, all types. And uh, this is for Dushanta especially. What was your workspace like, your first workspace like? Yeah, for us, it was a garage. <laughs> it was a garage? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, exactly, um, uh, something that um, I'm, really, uh, I'm really proud of because I'm actually, when we started, we had zero, I mean, I would have, looking at the space here, I would love to have had a space like this to start, but no, it was the garage, and my wife and I would, uh, you know, she's, she's also a co-founder okay. of our business, and we would uh, do everything uh, here to the garage. Yeah. <laughs> it's a garage, wow, that's amazing. So, it's it's pretty much uh, like, like, pretty much where all these famous founders, you know, especially like the founder of <laughs> yeah. Amazon, that was also a garage. <laughs> It's pretty cool. I want to ask you one more question. If there's any founder uh, in the food and beverage industry or anywhere else uh, that you would like to have dinner with, perhaps, who would uh, you? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll take that local. Okay. Make it yes. Local Go ahead. I would probably have dinner with Otara and with Ilya. Okay. Uh, I think that's highly possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're, they're fantastic. Okay, thanks again and once again it is uh, Dushanta De Silva for Sozo Beverages. I hope you have um, you know, all the success and I'm hoping for more uh, in coming out from Sozo Beverages and yeah, definitely Thank exciting. You. Thank, Thank you so much. You.